my name is Sheila. Welcome to my channel, Quilts, Patterns, and Crafts. On this channel, um, I feature some of the crafts that I like to do and teach you how to do some of the patterns in my store, Seaside Snuggles, on Etsy. In this video, which is a three-parter, we're going to learn how to make these pillows that I'm calling dots on a grid. Um, they use five inch squares to make a 16 inch pillow cover with an envelope closure. So in the first part, we're gonna learn how to make the block, how to sew them together. In the second video, we're going to learn how to put all of these pieces on a piece of background fabric. In the third video, we'll square up and actually put the back on the pillow. So if you just wanna learn how to make the pillow cover with your own pattern or block on the front, then you can skip to the third video. I'll have timestamps below. I'm not very good at getting videos out on a regular basis, so if you would like to join me in the future for projects, make sure that you click the little bell below so that you know when I have a new video out. So with that said, um, let's get started making the dots on a grid pillow. Hey lovelies, uh, today we're gonna make this cute pillow. I did it in neutral colors, but I do wanna try it in some other colors, um, some brighter colors. So if I get that done before I get the video completely edited, I will add some shots, some stills of the other pillows. So this is a, a pillow cover. It's a 16 inch pillow cover. And this is the back, it's just an envelope um, opening so it's super easy to make there are several ways that you can go about it this pattern is perfect for charm squares which are five inch squares and what you want to do is if you don't already have a stack of five inch squares as a chart packet is cut up some fabric into five inch squares and you will need four of each color for the front four of each color for the back. And that will be, in this case, it's 16 um, blocks in four different colors. So you'll need eight blocks of each color, okay? So I'm gonna start right here. With one row. Now you can pair these up with the same color, but what I did was I paired them up with different colors. So I'm just gonna do that same thing again. And just pair them up with different colors in this case to do one row like that. All right, so then what you want to do is you want to draw a three inch circle in the center of each of these blocks and there's a few ways to go about that if you have a compass you can use a compass to make a three inch circle if you have a jar it doesn't have to be exactly three inches but you want it around three inches um, not much bigger but maybe a little smaller um, you can use a lid to trace that or a glass and you want to put it in the center of each of these blocks another thing that you can do is use freezer paper and I drew three inch circles on freezer paper and I can eyeball center on each of these blocks. What you do with them is you can trace around your templates if you have a three inch template, but I use freezer paper so that I can just iron these onto my blocks and then sew around the freezer paper without doing all of this drawing. So I made four of these three inch circles so I can do one row at a time. I pair them up, take my iron, iron down the freezer paper. Oop, sorry, I got that all shaky. Oh, it's not hot enough yet. Let me give that a second to heat up. While that's heating up, the other thing that you can do is if you're not comfortable eyeballing it, is that you can fold your circles into quarters 
Then fold your fabric into quarters, just the top, well, what's gonna be the back layer in this case. So I'm just finger pressing it to make marks. Like that. And then you take your folded freezer paper and you line up the lines. So I wanna make sure that I'm lined up across here and then I'm lined up across here. And then when I'm ready to iron, I know that's in the center. Okay, so I'm gonna iron these pieces. This one as well. Again, I'm just eyeballing it because you'll be trimming it down later so you'll be able to center it up a little better. Okay, so I'm going to use my line for this one and then these I'm going to use the freezer paper. I'm going to take these over to the sewing machine and um, we'll get this first row sewn up. Okay, so we're going to sew around the circle if you have your lines drawn on just sew right on top of the line if you want to use this freezer paper method then you want to back tack you're going to keep your needle to the outside of the circle as much as you can if you penetrate the paper a little bit it's okay it'll pop right off okay so i'm just Trying to keep the needle just to the outside of the freezer paper as much as I can. Take it nice and slow. If you've got to stop, then go ahead and stop and adjust your fabric. When you get back to where you started, give it a little back tack and do not um, sew outside of your circle. If you have to go inside a little bit, it's fine, but don't sew outside of the circle. Um, at your beginning or end because that will skew your piece okay so this is you see I got a little inside here it's fine don't even worry about that pull your paper off gently because you're going to reuse this for your other rows if it's sewn on a little bit hold down your fabric and then pull it to the inside to just kind of pop it off those threads without causing too much tension on the threads a little bit here all right, so now I can use this again, and I've got a nice circle. I'm going to turn it to the back side so you can see the contrast a little bit. All right, so you have a nice circle in the center of your square blocks. So now I'm going to meet you over at the other camera, and we will do our first little round of cutting. Okay, so now we have all of our pieces sewn for the first row. I'm going to tear off my freezer paper and again you want to be careful you don't want to put too much stress on your threads there sorry this i bought this table and it's very wobbly i'm very disappointed it's not super sturdy but it's a foldable table so i don't know what i expected all right so now what i want to do is i want to pull off any little scraps of paper there I'm going to go ahead and trim my threads. Now I used um, the same fabric on the inside as I did on the outside for these, but if you want to use a less expensive fabric like muslin on the inside, or if you want to use your background fabric on the inside, that's fine. Uh, it all depends on the look that you're going after. Um, this one I'm just doing for consistency because I did the original this way, but in the future I might use muslin instead just to save on the cost because you really don't see it that much. All right, so after you have your circles cut and your threads trimmed, you want to fold it in half. And then you want to give it a very small cut about a quarter of an inch away from your stitches, just a little one, maybe a quarter of an inch in and a quarter of an inch inside your circle, like that. And I use snips, but just, you can use regular scissors. Then you wanna cut inside that circle 
a quarter of an inch away from your stitches. All right. Okay, and that gives you another circle. With this circle, you're gonna take your two inch circles, keeping the pair together, and you're gonna iron the freezer paper on your two inch circles for the inside dots. So you should have about a quarter of an inch around. All right, and so I'm gonna set that aside now, we're back to this. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to clip around the inside of our circle, staying about an eighth of an inch away, 16th of an inch maybe, from your stitches. Be careful not to cut your stitches. And I just, I'm going to take my iron and I'm going to relax the stitches first by applying some heat. Then I'm going to pull up one side and I'm going to work my way around with a little bit of heat to make sure that I get this seam all the way open. So rotate this around. Okay, so that's where I am so far. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to tuck one side, the top through the hole to the back side, all the way around. And it's it feels a little funny. <laughs> it feels a little funny, but, but go with it. And I'm gonna use my fingers to finger press around this seam. Just finger pressing it a little bit flat just to get it to hold before I get the real heat on it. And I'm going to go all the way around. Okay. Then I'm going to lay it out. I'm going to match up my edges as best I can. And then I'm going to apply some more heat. Do a little touch. Do a little steam. And iron both sides. Just get everything relaxed. All right. And there you have your first block. And it's just a nice hole in the middle of your fabric. So we're gonna do that with all of these and we're gonna set up our circles and then we'll go back to the machine to sew our circles.
accidentally cut through your threads, then go back and stitch just outside of where you cut. But stay very close to your original stitching and that way you'll be able to salvage the block. Okay, so if you accidentally cut too close to your threads, go back in, sew around the outside about an eighth of an inch away and then um, continue. So these are the blocks that I have so far and they are two-sided and I like to have them staggered so that they have different colors like this. So this would like be my first row. Okay, but we're gonna hold off on that and we're gonna go back to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew these dots next. So I'll meet you at the sewing machine. Okay. So now we're gonna sew around the freezer paper again, the way we did with the first one. This is a tighter circle, so you might need to go a little slower, but other than that, it's the exact same. Give yourself a little back tack, and start sewing around the outside of the paper. Oop, I got on top a little bit there, but it's not a problem. Don't worry about it. to the end, give it another little back tack. In this case, you don't want to sew inside too much. You want to, if you have to sew off, sew outside to the area that you'll be clipping. All right, so that's one. Here's two. Give it a little back tack. And I really like this method so that I don't have to spend a lot of time drawing circles because I'm going to use these same pieces of paper for the next row. I'm going to cut away this circle. Next. So you'll see that if you were to do the whole pillow, At a time with your ironing and your stitching, you'd actually get through it pretty quickly. Okay, I'm going to cut this away. Back tacked, and the last of four. Back tacked. And don't worry about getting these perfectly perfect again. The charm is in the organic nature of it. That's why I kind of wanted to go with neutral colors. I just thought it would look really cute. But I will do it in some brighter colors and add some photos at the end of this video. Just because I'm curious. All right, back tacked and 
these four are done. So I will meet you at the other camera. Okay, here we are, back at the other camera. We've got our four inside dots done. I'm going to peel away my paper the way I did the first time and set it aside for the other three rows. So we have all of these cut and the next thing we're going to do is I want to make sure that I have uh, one of each color. So here's the lighter, darker, very light. So I have my four colors. So what I want to do is I want to cut the back side of each of these so that I have all four colors. So all four colors are up right now. So I want to pull it apart in the middle and give a little snip right in the center of the back side of each one. So I'm gonna pull it up, pull it apart, give it a little snip. Next, up, pull it apart. I just keep the back side of the circle on the right so I know that I'm cutting the right side of it. If you just use muslin, then the muslin side will obviously be the side you wanna cut. Okay, so now that we have our circles cut on the back side of each, you want to open that up a little bit more so that you can get your finger inside of there. And we're just gonna do that on all of these. And whoop, that's not enough. Then you wanna turn these right side out. So I'm just sticking my finger inside of there, putting some pressure on that seam, but not too much. You don't want to pop the seam, especially if you found that you cut a little bit too close to the edge. But just work your way around the inside of that circle and then give it a press. And some steam. And you have a nice circle there. Okay, so we're going to do that for all of these. So now we got our four inside dots. Let me show you how we're going to trim up these outside pieces. 
So we're going to trim these down to four and a half by four and a half. You want to make sure that your circle is not very like wonky when you lay it down. Then you want to center this up so that you have about the same amount all the way around to the four and a half inch mark. So if you have a three inch circle, you're gonna have one and a half inches total all the way around, which will be 0.75 inches on all the way around your circle. So I wanna have three quarters of an inch here, three quarters of an inch at the top, then I should have three quarters of an inch, ooh, taking me to the four and a half, which is not right. It's seven eighths, seven eighths on each side. So get that all centered up. So you have four and a half inches and then you wanna square up your block. Rotate it, set it on the four and a half inch marks. And cut. Okay. Do that with all of your pieces. Then we'll lay them out and sew them together. And I'll meet you back here when I have all the other blocks done. Okay, we're back. So um, we are working on the pillowcase again. I have all of my pieces turned inside out, or right side out. I've got all of my inner circles turned right side out, and I have my layout. So um, this is how I wanna sew them, and I'm gonna sew the rows together first. So I'll sew each one of these rows, and then I'll sew the rows to one another. My dots I'm gonna to leave to the side until I'm ready to put on the backing. So I'm just gonna set those up there and I'll meet you at the other camera and we will sew the rows together. So we've made all the blocks and we've put the grids together. We've made the dots. In the second video, we're going to attach the grid and the dots to the background fabric and do a little, um, stitching down to enclose our edges. I hope you'll join me and I'll see you in the next one.